Good morning and welcome to Carolina Cares, an iHeart Media production. My name is Tyler Ryan, your host, and today we're going to talk about baseball and, and soda pop and, and all things the, the American pastime, the true American pastime. Some may say it's football. My friends, I will make the argument it is not. It is baseball. Baseball, the one constant there's been, Ray. America's been blown over by a steamroll and rebuilt, but the one constant thing is baseball. If I were to paraphrase Tent Man from Field of Dreams. Joining me this morning, the uh, the the Bob Euchre of Columbia. Mr. Baseball, we call him. Oh, my god! Or I do now. Bill Shanahan, <laughs> the, the founder of of uh, the now Lexington Blowfish. At one point, the Columbia Blowfish, but the franchise has been around a long time. But first of all, good morning to you, sir. Tyler Ryan, it's always uh, a pleasure to be with you. Um, you know, you mentioned about baseball being America's pastime, and so many people think that uh, college is college football is uh, the number one sport. You know, God's favorite sport is actually baseball. Did I you know that? that? Yeah, because in in the the book of Genesis, it says in the big inning. That's how the Bible <laughs> starts, and uh, so we're going to go with it. And one of the commandments: Thou not sh- shall not steal. So there's a lot of a lot going on that uh, talks about this uh, great game. Oh, there's there's a, a lot there. Now, man, I know you've you've been involved with the sport uh, forever for your whole life. I know you are obviously uh, you and your your beautiful wife. Um, you know, you, you put your time, your efforts, your money, and you've, you've built this franchise up, and you have for a long. But let's talk a little bit about about baseball. We've got some time here to, this morning to chat. So let's go back and talk about how baseball kind of came to be, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna test your baseball knowledge this morning. Okay. I don't have the questions. I'm gonna let you tell me. And if wow. you if you say it with confidence, I'm gonna believe you because you are Bill Shanahan. Okay. <laughs> well, if we're talking about baseball, you know, th- there's a lot of controversy in regards to actually how it started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they played baseball uh, at the end of the Civil War, really? um, and uh, they they say the founder was Abner Doubleday. I've heard that, but there is there is a controversy that that he actually wasn't the first one that uh, that started. And interestingly enough, baseball is very similar to a English game called rounders. Um, and the way I found out about that, rounders uh, is played over um, across the pond. Um, and uh, I had been involved with some Renaissance fairs in the past out in California. Mm-hmm where we had them out to a ballpark and they came out and they played the game of rounders and showed it. it's very similar to the game. Just like in India, cricket is such a big game, very similar. But um, somewhere, somewhere, uh, and again, it's been uh, credited to uh, one gentleman, but uh, many, I'm sure, had something to do with it. And that's how baseball got started. Has, has baseball been fundamentally, I know a lot of sports, you know, they kind of, they come through the years and they have growth and they change a little bit and they morph and, and sometimes they're not quite the same. You get better technology. Football, of course, technology changes with equipment, maybe not so much with baseball, but has baseball, as, as it sits now in 2019, when we come to Lexington to see the Blowfish play, is that fundamentally what we saw back when the Bambino played, when, you know, 1901, I mean, is that... Is, is that fundamentally the same sport? Yes, it is. Uh, there have been a few modifications over the years. You know, the, the bases are 90 feet apart, mm-hmm. and the pitcher's mound is 60 feet, 6 inches to home plate. So that hasn't changed. Um, the dimensions in the outfield are always up to wherever you are located. Okay. Uh, so as an example, um, if you go to any Major League Baseball stadium, they they determine what the – what the um, what the dimensions are going to be now? If you look at somewhere like Fenway Park uh, down the right field line, the pesky pole that's three hundred and two feet. That's probably one of the closest you're going to get to. Um, um, you, you know, usually you see three fifteen okay. down the lines, three thirty straightaway centers anywhere from four hundred to four ten. Um, but here's an interesting side note, Tyler Ryan, and you'll love this when we. Uh, designed Lexington County Baseball Stadium. We didn't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. For those that come to our ballpark in Lexington, um, you're talking about a ballpark that was built for... That's all. And it's a beautiful, intimate little little yeah. stadium. And um, so we didn't have a lot of money. So, Tyler, we decided to come up with ideas to make it stand out. So I designed the right field dimension from home plate Mm-hmm. To the foul pole is 302 feet, just like Boston Red Fenway Park. Straightaway center from home plate is 394, which is Wrigley Field, Chicago Cubs. Down the left field foul pole at the left field line is 318, which is Yankee Stadium. And then from home plate to the backstop is 55 feet, 
like Dodger Stadium. So wow. Lexington County Baseball Stadium is linked to the that. four great Major League Baseball stadiums of today. But to answer your question a little bit more in regards to the fundamentals, I think we've seen a couple of couple of things that have, have dramatically changed. A designated hitter back in the late 70s. And I wanted to get into that, so I'm glad you – I was going to ask about why in the American League do we have the DH, the National League, of course, we don't. So what, what what's the difference? Where'd that come from, and why? You know that's a, that's a great question. Um, the National League was ahead. You know they were the they were the senior senior circuit, and American League came on afterwards. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know the the owners in that league decided that they wanted to have some more um, opportunity for offensive uh, uh, offensive power. Okay. And by adding a DH, taking the pitcher out of the lineup, and you know, in most cases, a pitcher, if you, he's batting ninth, then he's going to probably go zero for four. I mean, most of the pitchers are not hitters; right. that's not what they're 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 groomed for. So you bring in a DH, and and um, you know, a guy that can um, you know hit two fifty to three hundred, maybe be a home run hitter, or just be someone consistent. So that does change the game. Sure, um, I believe the National League just believes that you know that's not the way that this. It was built and or created, but the way it's going, um, I'm 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 concerned because I'm I'm against the DH. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always been against the DH. I like the way the strategy of the game that you know your pitcher uh, is in for certain innings and is he going to hit or is he not going to hit? Is he going to bunt or are you going to pinch hit? All of those things are. That's the great thing about this game: the strategy that goes right. into it. So that and um, just recently, I'm really again. It's not at the major league level yet, Tyler, but it is at the minor league and at the uh, collegiate level with us is the international rule and extra innings. I've always believed that baseball is timeless. Mm-hmm. It could go on forever. Yeah. I remember a game uh, in uh, 1964 where I grew up in San Francisco and the Giants and the Mets played 23 innings, and it was like oh, one of those man. things where, you know, long game. Players played a long time, but. That's the game. Right. It could, could just keep going on and on. But now this new rule, and they're testing it at the minor league level for major league, is that it gets to the 10th inning, you add a, a runner at first and second for the visiting team, and um, that's going to give a better chance to score a run early and um, so, and get the game over with because a lot of people are against uh, – you know, dragging a game out, which I think is one of the beauties. You get free baseball. I, again, I'm a, I am love the game of baseball, <laughs> and I love to promote. You know mm-hmm. that, Tyler. But at the same time, uh, the game is important out there, and so you don't want – you want to respect the game. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I, I wasn't aware that that's what they're testing. You know, I, I'm not really a big fan of that, i got to be honest. I mean, now listen, I've gone to a lot of baseball games. I've hosted a lot of baseball games. i played baseball. I, like you, that's probably my favorite sport. Um, second, you know, tennis. I like to watch tennis. I'm not very good at it. Better, I'm better at baseball. Baseball is probably my favorite. If you were to say sport, it's it. So I mean, well, I'm, I think I'm you went you. deep in the media home run derby last year, didn't you? I did. I got I got a lucky poke. I yeah, sure did. yeah. But uh, but yeah, to see that, that's kind of disappointing. That they're going to. I know. I understand they want to accelerate the game. Fans or attention spans are less. They want to get back to network. They got to make more money every time. I get all the the business of why they might want to accelerate the game, but it seems that it takes away from the purity of baseball, does it not? You know, I was just reading an article about the NBA and the NFL, and they have, um, I guess, the owner of the the Saints, um, the woman who is the wife of Benson, he died. And um, they're changing what they call who owns the teams. They're calling them governors now. I heard that. Um, I'm going, what what are you talking about? What? Mm I sure hope that never happens in baseball. I mean, you own the team. I mean, right. you know, you, you you think of a George Steinbrenner of uh, owning a team, you know, or yeah. uh, or Ted Turner. I mean, these these guys were, uh, uh, yeah, they were characters, but at the same time, what what a difference they made in getting attention for the game of baseball. Sure, sure. We're talking with Bill Shanahan, the uh, the founder, the owner, uh, president of the now Lexington County Bluefish. Uh, fantastic uh, minor. That's not minor. It's college league. You're the East. It is Eastern We're, Coast League, right? It's actually a baseball league. So our players are come from colleges. We have players from the University of South Carolina Gamecocks. We have mm-hmm. Clemson. We have SEC, ACC. We got a player from the Tar Heels, the University of North Carolina. We just picked one up from West Virginia, and then we have a lot of players that went to local high schools here and now are off to college. So we have represented from Lexington High. We have River Bluff. We've got Gilbert. We've got right. Pelion, uh, Dutch Fork. Um, it's pretty amazing. So 
I had been in minor league baseball for over three decades. Wow. And I loved the game. And I retired from the pro side and uh, just to concentrating on the the collegiate boys of summer. I love this because of the the emotional connection, Tyler, with your players. Mm-hmm. Love the game of minor league baseball, but those players are coming, and their their goal is to what? Move up as quickly Go as to the they show. can. Right. They want to get to the show. And so you don't normally get a lot of players that are from the area that are assigned to the team. Because in minor league baseball, the, the team itself, the players, the coaches, are owned by the major league team. Right. The franchise is owned by a local owner or an out of town owner. So they have the rights to the team. So it's called a player development contract. So these players go to spring training for, let's say the New York Mets, Mm -hmm. and then they're assigned to what level. And there's uh, from the major leagues, one step down is triple a, then there is double a, which is really where a lot of the talent funnels into. Then you have three single a clubs. You have a high single a club, you have a low single-A club, and then you have a short-season club. Okay. In this case, in Columbia, they're at the low single-A single, single level uh, in the South Atlantic League. So a lot of those kids are 18, 19, 20 years old, but not necessarily people that kids that have been our area. So when you come to a Blowfish game, right. you might see Josh Center playing center field, and, and he went to Lexington High, or behind the plate is Jared Curvin from Lexington or, or a River Bluff. It's pretty cool. It's it's really cool, you know. And I and I've said this, and, and I say I say it all the time, and and, and I, I believe it. There's something about college and high school athletes that's it's a better game, in my opinion. It's a better game. I'd rather go see a, a college game at USC at the Blowfish, uh, go see a River Bluff game, than go see a professional sport. I, and, and not they're not great athletes, and they work hard. I want to get into that in a second. And, and not not because I, I love the Boston Red Sox. That is my team. Fenway Park is my favorite place. I love the smell of it, everything about it. But I feel like the the kids that are coming up through contracts, they don't have their their agents. They don't have all the stuff that you know. Now their their shift is I'm here and I'm going to hold it. Whereas these kids coming up who are who are high school getting into college, college trying to get into the double, you know, the, the single A, whatever. They're trying so hard to say, look, I am good at this sport. Yes. Not, I'm good enough to get here. Now I got to hang on to it because I have a contract and I, I bought my mama a house. Yeah. You know, I just think it's a, yeah. it's just a different mindset, I think, in the play. Well, you know, at the, uh, the collegiate, summer collegiate play that we're in, uh, in our league, this is the first time that most of these players have ever used a wood bat. Think about it. Now, so when I grew up, school, I'm yeah, 65, yeah. so when I grew up, I was using wood bats. But, you know, I would have to think, Tyler, you probably used aluminum bats we through your, your years at uh, Little League or Dixie <laughs> Youth or high school or college. And so somebody, uh, there are people that make a comment, oh, well, the Blowfish are a wood bat league. Like, there's something wrong with that. Actually, that's a great it's, thing because if they want to make it to the majors, they have to learn how to use a wood bat. And you, you hear the sound. You can tell the difference. If oh. somebody doesn't know the difference, watch a game of baseball that ding versus crack, a broken bat. Two things. The ding oh. and, and, the, and, and the wood bat difference. Yeah. But learning to use a wood bat, mm-hmm. aluminum bat, because on a metal bat, you could hit it on your wrist and you might have a line drive over the third baseman's head. You have to find a sweet spot. Right. The sweet spot uh, on a wood bat to get to get some good hits. So you don't see a lot of home runs at this level because they're just learning how to use it. Sure. And we've had in the last five years, we've had over forty blowfish players that have been drafted uh That's in fantastic. the major league draft. So um you're coming to see players, uh, you know, not too many ever make it to the majors, let's right. be honest, but they do have an opportunity to to continue to develop and grow. And, uh, you know, if you get into the minor leagues and you get up to the double-A level, because those three single-A clubs mm-hmm. kind of funnel to that one, I've watched some great players uh, jump right from double-A up to the majors. One was one is my son-in-law. Oh, wow. Uh, down in Mobile when we had the double-A uh, Arizona Diamondbacks uh, mm-hmm. team, um, Mark... Um, who I only knew was a right. uh, long story. We're not going to get into it today. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, um, he got called up. A third baseman uh, got hurt at third base for the Arizona Diamondbacks. The AAA third baseman was injured. And so Mark got the call right up mm-hmm. to the major leagues, and he never came back. So he's been in the, the major leagues for 13 years. And it's kind of cool uh, to see that, that when you get to that, you don't see pretty much anybody getting from single-A level. Right. But – you see the stars, the prospects, 
you know, Jumping jump out. from double A up to up to the majors. Of course, remember you know, again Red Sox, but Jackie Bradley Jr. Sure, a friend of mine. You know, when he was at USC, we had him on on the TV show a lot. I was excited when he got drafted. You know, into the minors because he was a Red Sox franchise, and you know he got same thing. He it was an injury. He got put up for one game, supposed to be, and he stayed and he stayed and he stayed. And now he's what two or three World Series. Yeah. He's play, I mean, I mean, come on, amazing. This guy's and, an and he's such a great defensive yeah. uh, player. His, his hitting, he's still continually. Uh, there's challenges there, but. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing what happened to Mark. And I'll tell you just quickly what happened is I, I have two, my, my wife Vicky and I, who own the Blowfish, but at right. the time I was over uh, a double A baseball team in Mobile. And um, my girls were getting old enough. Um, they were in high school and college. And I had a policy that my girls don't date any minor league baseball players. <laughs> and um, so, anyhow, make a long story short, um, Mark Reynolds was the first player to get, was only with us for, get a call two weeks into the season. And uh, it's, uh, he says, Mr. Shanahan. I said, yes. He said, it's Mark Reynolds. And I said, oh, Mark, we're so proud of you. You're hitting home runs up there, you know, that you jump right up. What can I do for you? And he said, well, Mr. Shanahan, I know that you have a policy about uh, your daughter's not dating minor league baseball players. And I don't want this to sound arrogant or cocky or anything, but I really think very fondly of your daughter, Kathleen. I'd like to ask permission to date her. No kidding. What'd you say? Well, obviously, you know the ultimate story, but what did you, what did you say initially? I paused, <laughs> totally shocked, and I said, I'll call you later. And I hung up, and I didn't call Kathleen. I didn't call Vicky. Right. Our manager uh, was Brett Butler, who used okay. to play for the Dodgers and the Braves and yep. the Giants. Great guy. And uh, <laughs> I called him. I said, okay, tell me all about Mark Reynolds. And he said, great, great guy. Um you know, why? And I said, well, he's calling to ask to date my date Kathleen. So that's how it all got started. And next, you know, they started dating and then they got engaged and then they got married. And 10 years later, uh, three little grand boys later, uh, good things have been happening. So that's the story. That's a great story. Yeah, great it's fun. Story. Bill Shanahan, the uh, the energy, uh, the energy, the the owner uh, and founder of the the Lexington Blowfish. So let's talk a little bit about the Blowfish. I, I, I want to go back a little bit. Of course, you, you played at Capital City Stadium, the Bomber Stadium, for so long down off of Assembly Street, and you guys were there. Excuse me, give me give me some of the background. Walk me through to where we are now. This fantastic ballpark in Lexington that is so beautiful. But I, and we'll talk about that as well. Tyler, it uh, Vicky and I and all our kids were little at the time. Um, I had been out in Southern California running another team out there, and uh, Seattle Mariners uh, single A affiliate California League. I do have to throw this in when you think about minor league baseball, and every once in a while you get an opportunity to have a great player on your team. I had an 18 year old named Ken Griffey Jr. No in kidding. 1988, and we watched a player. I'm getting goosebumps because. Watching Ken Griffey Jr. was watching the greatest player I'd ever seen play the game at the minor league level. Right. And everybody said, well, if he stays healthy, he'll make it the Hall of Fame. So he is the first player in my career uh, that played for our team that went to the Hall of Fame and That's was amazing. elected. So anyhow, after that, uh, the owner of the Columbia Mets, this is a funny story because uh, the Mets had returned back in 1983 and then they had a different ownership group mm-hmm. in 1990 and the owner was out of New York, Dr. Marginow. He's a sports psychologist and he said, let's get a new stadium built or renovated. So they renovated the stadium, the old ballpark down there. And um, you know how they say, build it and they will come? Yeah, of course. They didn't come. I, I remember that. And uh, <laughs> so uh, he reached out to me. My background was... Uh, pretty big into promoting and mm-hmm. and in and getting people excited uh kind of like you and um you know enthusiasm breeds more enthusiasm sure. and crowds attract crowds so uh, he brought me in to turn the franchise around and i came in a beautiful little ballpark vanilla no no real uh, no uh, real um nothing that you would say this really ballpark really stands out right. however the history of that site is amazing. And we can talk about that in a minute, but anyhow, so I came in and, um, I just, I just came in and started trying to get people excited and high energy, uh, electric atmospheres, bring in concert sound, bring in a mm-hmm. high energy, uh, uh, DJ instead of EA announcer, no more organ sounds or, you know, let's go synthesize or let's go high upbeat and let's have some fun promotions. And all of a sudden good things started happening. And, I had, a, I had a problem with it being called the Mets in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I felt that we needed to have our own identity. And that was the year, 92, year, Jimmy Doolittle's Raiders celebrated their 50th reunion in Columbia. Mm -hmm. And um, because they used to train in 1941. Yep. Um, at Lake Murray. At Lake Murray on Bomb Island. And and that 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 was the first moral victory of the war when they attacked Japan on it by bombers. So we thought about, well, the name of the Raiders, and we started thinking, well, you think of the LA Raiders or the Oakland Raiders. Right. The B-25 bombers. What if we call them, and we're in the capital city, and it's got ring. Let's call them the capital city bombers. I love it. And that's how it all came to be. So we had a lot of fun, rebranded it. Crowds got bigger. Mm -hmm. Our company continued to grow. And then the next thing you know, um, I was down going down to build a new stadium in Mobile, Alabama. Um, and so I left. And about, I don't know, four years later, our ownership group sold Columbia. Mm -hmm. They moved it to Greenville in okay. 2004. And so Mayor Coble gives me a call down in Mobile, Mobile and says, hey, Bill, we lost the team. Can you bring us another minor league team? And I said, not at the old ballpark. The, the reason they left, it's just not up to minor league standards anymore. But I had been studying the Coastal Plain League summer collegiate baseball. I said, I think this would be a great fit until minor league baseball returns. And that's how the Blowfish came to be. And the reason, many of you go, Blowfish, Blowfish. Hootie and the Blowfish? You betcha. That was an honor of Hootie and the Blowfish that we named the team the Blowfish because in 1993, September of 93, Hootie was the biggest band in the world, and they were coming off their tour, mm -hmm. and they needed a, an outdoor venue to have a homecoming concert. And I threw my hand up, please, 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 and dang it, if they didn't have over 11,000 people at Capital City Stadium <laughs> wow. in September of 1993 for Hootie's return and, and homecoming, and I never forgot that. And that was a way to say thank you for what you did, not only for Columbia, but for us yeah. And so the name is named. So I, I, did someone said, do you have to have permission? I said, no, not really, because we're not naming it Hootie. Right. It's but fish. I sure. knew Jim Sonnefeld, the drummer. So I called Sony and I said, hey, Sony, we're going to name the team Blowfish. And he said, he said, one, one word. Cool. And that was it. <laughs> he came out and threw out the first pitch and the, the rest is history. So that's how we became the Blowfish. Much more to come on that. Sure. So, so you play for several seasons at, uh, you know, at uh, Capital City, the Bomber Stadium. Uh, obviously, that's it, it's an older ballpark, you know, and it's still it's still a pretty park, but it, it's you know seen as age, and so you come time. Yeah, to, it's getting ready to be uh, demolished, and I think that's a sad thing. Well, but. it is. It, it look the the good news is there's a beautiful stadium um, down you know three miles mm -hmm. away that is doing um, excellent. The Fireflies yep. have uh, done a great job, um, and um, Capital City Stadium is just sitting there, and um, it's really the site. Mm -hmm. And and I would like to extend just so so those listening, it's pretty amazing. It's not the stands, it's the site. It's it's where the history came to be. Barney Dreyfus, who was the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates in the twenties, right, built a ballpark there and brought his Pirates minor league team there. And Barney Dreyfus is the founder of the World Series. That's incredible. And he's in the Hall of Fame. And it, and and, and, it started and we're connected. And Dreyfus Road connects with Assembly Street. So that's how it all got started. Then some of the great players, some Hall of Famers like Frank Robinson, um, right. of course, played here for the Columbia Reds. Um, many, many great players. But the one that back in 2013, you might remember, I brought in Hank Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, Hank Aaron uh, played his last ever minor league baseball game for the Jacksonville Braves at Capital City Park. And so I brought him in because I got to know him because uh, he's from Mobile and we named the stadium after him down there. Right. And so you start thinking about that kind of that kind of history. That's why that site is so important and needs to be um, have kind of a historical mark, which is great. That's good stuff. Talking with Bill Shanahan, the owner and founder of the Blowfish. We got about five minutes left, Bill. I, I know there's a Are lot you more kidding? detail. That's all we have. I'm telling you, I can do this all day with you. Yes. Sir. But let's fast forward. This is part one. <laughs> you, you, you will come back for part two. We'll get more into that. But uh, but as we stand now in 2019, of course, the transition was made to Lexington. Uh, a big fundraising, a commitment by Lexington County, raising it's over three million dollars, which sounds to me as a whole ton of money. But when you're talking about building a 
a county ballpark, it really you probably have to you know really be careful with the dollars. But you've built a, such an amazing ballpark. It's it's got an old school feel. It's 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 state of the art, but it's old school feel. I love it. Thank you. It's uh, you know over the years I've had the uh, honor and blessing to. Uh, uh, and experiences to design stadiums. And um, so with the limited funds that we had to build that stadium, um, there were things that I thought would really stand out. Of course, as I mentioned, the field dimensions mm-hmm. is kind of cool. It didn't cost us anything, but the but the wide open concourse and the and the covered grandstand that gives you that feel of the vintage ballpark and the all of the seats in the bowl are Wrigley Field style seating, those green right. seats, the drink rails, you know, and it's very intimate. So there's about a 1,500 um capacity right in that area so if you only put you know a thousand people in it it looks like a it looks like it's full so and there's no, like and there's no r- bad seats there really aren't you know you yeah. get down to the third base side um it's it's uh you know we've got the old bleachers from the old ball the old lexington high school football stadium and uh then you can go out further out to left field because we've got that short fence we've got a home run hill Yep. We put Adirondack chairs out there. We've got a wiffle ball park that we built out there for the kids. So we have a lot of fun at that ballpark. If you, if you haven't been to the Lexington County ballpark, it's it certainly go catch a baseball game, go out and enjoy the great stuff. In the last couple of minutes, coming up, we're celebrating the birthday of America. The 4th of July is coming up, and I know that there's a great big, well, as it should, a display and tribute to America coming up on Thursday night out at Bluefish Stadium. Yes, Tyler. Uh, always, uh, you know, we just came off probably one of the most special nights of, of every season when we honor Fort Jackson's basic training soldiers and they were out to the ballpark last uh, last Saturday night. Now we move into the 4th of July, which when you think of 4th of July, you think of baseball, you think of fireworks, and you think of hot dogs. And, and that's baseball, right? If that's everything to do with it. And we're even going to throw in, we're not throwing in the kitchen sink, we're going to throw in dollar beers. How's that? I love that. So if you're listening, if you're looking for a place to take the family on the 4th of July, you can experience blowfish baseball, which is great baseball. You can experience an incredible, powerful, patriotic, constantly themed fire and dollar beer. And I don't think it gets better than that, unless you're with Tyler Ryan <laughs> that morning, because we're going to be doing our annual hot dog eating contest oh. on ABC Columbia, right? Yeah, this is going to hurt a little bit. I, I've thrown down the gauntlet perhaps prematurely, but yes, on, uh, on ABC Columbia Thursday morning, uh, I'll be wearing the stretchy pants, and I'm going to try to... I, last year, I won, but we've got it. There's a guy coming down from Charlotte that thinks he can unseat me. But why are you saying you're going to wear the stretchy pants just that night? I noticed the ones you're wearing now. <laughs> I'm, I'm a prepping. From last year. I'm prepping. <laughs> prepping. Phil Shannon. That's, that's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. And yeah. and for those yeah. who want tickets, I mean, come on. You can get in the ballpark for six bucks. Yeah, you can't, you can't, go, to, you can't go to a movie Yeah, for that, I mean, you know? a box seat is $9. Um, yeah. And then July 5th, is another patriotic fireworks show with, of course, Blowfish Baseball, and it's honoring the veterans, and veterans get in for free. I love that. i got to stop you right there, Bill. I want to talk more. I'd love to hear more. I'm, I'm fascinated by history, but uh, blowfishbaseball.com is the uh, is the website. You can get information there. Also, WCOS, it's WCOS night. For those of you who are listening on, on the 97.5 to the show this morning, uh, if you go to 97.5wcos.com, you can win some tickets, but for, for five bucks, for six, for nine dollars, Baseball, America, I I love it. And I love what you do for the community, Bill. I, I, I have 10 seconds left, but I know you're very dialed in. You do a lot of stuff for not only Lexington, but the Midlands with the team. And we truly appreciate you bringing America's pastime here and keeping it here. Thank you, Tyler Ryan. All right, Bill Shanahan, the owner and the uh, the inventor. See the inventor of baseball, but the, <laughs> the founder of Blowfish Baseball here in the Midlands. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for Carolina Cares, an iHeart Media production. My name is Tyler Ryan, your host. If there's something you'd like to hear us discuss or a guest on the show, you can email me, Tyler Ryan at iHeartMedia.com. That's Tyler Ryan at iHeartMedia.com. Links for you at WVOC. Just put in that keyword, Carolina Cares. And you have a fantastic 4th of July. Thanks again to Bill Shanahan and the Blowfish. And I will speak with you in seven days.